How's it going everyone? This is Sean here from Scale Model Car Guy channel and today's video will be well model talk with George. My buddy George, y'all know him. I've had a series on here where I go to George's house and uh, we go over some of his models that he's built over the years. Talk about the history of modeling, what he's done and uh, just have a good time fellowshipping with a fellow modeler. And uh, old school guy that's been around since long time since the hobby started. So uh, good video. So uh, y'all check this out. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit of long video, but it'll be a good video, guys. And before we get this video started, I want to thank all my subscribers, all my old subscribers, new subscribers. If you're not a subscriber and you're watching this video, my channel's about model cars. I love to build model cars. I love to uh, go to contests. I build. I try to do some tips here and there, you know, which I'm not the best. There's better guys out there than me. I like to promote other people doing models, doing videos. So uh, anytime I list somebody, I always leave a description below. Anytime you want to get a hold of me, I always have my Gmail in the description below. And uh, like I said, uh, and if you're, you know, you, you you watch this and you do models, it's not hard to do a video, guys. I do it on my phone. Uh, very simple. It ain't that hard. So try it out. And uh, like I said, I shout out anybody that uh, that wants to try. It's all good. All right. Like I said, leave a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever makes your world go around. Hit the bell for notifications. And let's get this thing started. Well, I was over at George's today. Every time I go over there, he he's always he's always sending me home with something. Always, always, always. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Uh, he don't have to, but he does. I love the guy to death. We've been buddies forever. Well, he knows I love my my Corvettes and I love my Gassers. He sent me home with another one of these. Never been built. Good old kit. Y'all know how I love those. How I have a special place in my heart for those. He gave me a box, a, a vintage box full of parts. Uh, and then he also gave me a couple builder Jaguars, big eight scale Jaguars. This is a yellow version, and he gave me a red version over here. He knows I love my Jaguars. And, well, here's part of the red. It's dusty and everything, but. Uh, another, I, I've already got one that uh, I got to build, so I, that makes me with three. One of these, I guarantee you, is going to be a race car. I'm going to look around for parts and uh, make old Le Mans car or something out of one of them. And uh, so, yeah. And the other one I can build stock. The other one might be a custom. You never know. Have you ever seen a custom Jaguar? We'll figure something out with them. Or just two. Uh, Two variations of stock in one racing or two racing in one stock. We'll figure it out. All right, guys. Uh, check this video out. Like I said, we talk about the little bit of the history of models, a little bit of, you know, uh, stuff he's done over the years. Uh, it's it's awesome. Awesome video, guys. Check it out. You don't want to miss it. All right. I'm going to shut up, get off here, and start watching this video. Volumes up. All right, guys. We're back again with George. I'm at George's house, and we're going to talk about his Studebakers. All right, George, let's talk about some Studebakers. Well, this is some more of that stuff I built like 30 years ago. Uh, us two fat boys in there trying to get them out of my display case took a little bit of work, but we got them in here. Yeah, we got them in here. Uh, which one you want me to start with? And well, let's start much. with the... Oldest build over here, and then we'll work our way to the others. Well, I guess that would be the oldest build, I'm guessing. Okay. That's the uh, 53 Starliner, Star the AMT kit. I kind of built that one as a oh, semi-custom. It's not totally stock. Yeah. Not a stock color. Uh, see if I can get us some little underhood detail. Of course... The V8, I sanded that off the nose. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if I can hold that up. 
Oh yeah. That uh, that custom intake is from a Revell parts pack, mm -hmm. 354 Cadillac. It's got a magneto on it, I see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. Chrome cover over the battery. Yeah. Uh, not a whole lot done under there, but uh, I see the uh, radiator hose is missing. Yeah, these are beginning to get a little old. The parts are falling <laughs> off of them I don't even know about. Yeah. Uh, but that's... Uh, I, I want to say I probably did this one about... Uh, 1988. 1988. Yeah. Some of our listeners probably weren't even born then. Uh, they probably weren't, but I, I do believe this was, uh, uh, 1988 is when I did this one, I do believe. And it was, you know, it was just just to build it, just mm -hmm. to have a good time. I didn't, I wasn't building that to do anything, go any shows or right. contests. I just well, wanted that's... a semi-custom Study baker, and I, that's what I built. That's pretty much what all my cars are for. I don't <laughs> worry about contests. Every once in a while, one pops up. I might put one in it, but I don't. Well, I mean, it, I like to go to them. Don't get me wrong. Right but. at that time, I was I was doing a lot of contest work, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you know, I didn't I didn't spend a lot of time on that one. I probably that's a week, mm -hmm. probably three days. Well, was more than three days. Paint probably took that long to dry. Can we see the back end of it real quick? I like see. I like that. I love the way that back end swoops down on that thing. That thing's beautiful. Yeah. Missing some chrome trim up there, well, too. Well, it did, too, didn't it? Yeah, it's getting old. <laughs> it's, it's been around Let's see a if while. I can't get in there and look at that interior on that. How do you want to set it so you can? I, I don't know. I, yeah, I can see it. Yeah, I like that two-tone. And it's got the pinstriping around the seats. Yeah. Now that's the bucket seats. That's about the only option. That and the console for the custom right. version is about all you got. So that's that's added there. And of course, you know, I shaved off the, door handles. the V8 emblem and the door handles just for a custom version. Right. You know. Now let's look at your stock version just to show the comparisons. Well, there's a stock one right there. And that is a beautiful stock one. <laughs> You say you use the MCW paints on that? That's uh, uh, yeah, that's model car world paint. He uh, he's got some good good paint. Good paint. Uh, I'll have to give the guy a plug for that. I mean, he's he's no sponsor or anything like that for us, but no. that's his stuff. I'll give him a plug. He he does good work, uh, and that's true Studebaker colors. That's beautiful colors too. Uh, I absolutely love what you've done under the hood of this one. Uh, let me get him off there so you can get a good look. Look at the perfect subtle weathering on that, guys. That engine block is green, and that's black valve covers. And then the orange on top of, was that, that the oil? Uh, one thing I, wa I want to mention about this kit. Okay. The instructions in this kit mm -hmm. shows you that there, there right here is, is the fuel pump. Right. This is the 232 V8. Mm-hmm. Uh, later, they were on the side of the block, but uh, that's a fuel pump, and that's a, a external oil filter. Wow. It's the instructions are backwards. That's the way they go on a Studebaker. Okay. The kit shows you to do it vice versa. Yeah, the the oil filter will be over on the driver's side, and that uh, fuel pump will be over here. Okay. That's wrong. Okay. That's the correct way they go. So I turned mine around, but. Uh, well, just little touches like that. Uh, just... Most people wouldn't know because most people who build this kit have never seen one of those motors anyway. Right. I got one out in the backyard. I'm going to look at it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, you do got old student back there. That was your high school truck, wasn't it? It was. I drove it to high school. Got T-boned. Yeah. God dang. Boy, that thing's beautiful. And see, there's the, it's got the V8 emblem on the side and your door handles to where that one was shaved off. And there's the one on the there's on the, the one on the hood. hood. Yeah, that looks good. Turn it around so I can see that interior. There we go. This one here, guys, has the bench seat, and it's done in the two tone, just like the top. The instrument panel and the dash looks great. Uh, the gauge faces mm -hmm. in there are. Uh, Best model car parts. Best model car parts. Uh, I think you can find him on, on some eBay spots if you look in there. Yeah. Uh, he sells those uh, for all kinds of different models. Mm -hmm. You can do those gauge faces. And he's got some bad reviews on there sometimes. And I, I want to mention 
Guys, they're not, they are not decals. Right. It's printed on glossy paper and you cut them out. Mm -hmm. And you either put them in from the front or, the or you drill them out and put them in from the back, you know, and just mm -hmm. lay them up there. And then put some sort of clear, which I use this canopy glue clear. Right. It's a little more clear than an Elmer's glue will get. <laughs> you know what I use on mine? I use that uh, tester's window maker and I drop it on my cluster. Um, Never and it, it, it goes clear too, just as clear it as it may can be. be about the same thing as it that. It probably is. I guarantee you it's the same stuff. Uh, here's your bottom shot if you want to. I like that. I like there. that weathering under. I love when people build cars like this. That's realistic. It's not the outside's not so rusted, and I mean I like the outside to be shiny, you know, a little bit, you know. You want it to look used. I driven. want to. I want it to look driven. That's the way I do my cars. That's the way I want them. I want them to look like that. I don't. I don't want the top to be pristine and the bottom to be pristine. I like it to look driven. Well, there's nothing perfect about this one, yeah. believe me. Uh, but I don't uh, care to build. I mean, it's just not my style, and I like the way other people do it, but I just don't hardly want to build, you know, one that's rusted out and this and that and this and that. But I like them driven, you know what I'm saying? Well, I, I can probably, I probably have a, a better luck when I build the rusted out beaters. Mm -hmm. Because... Uh, tell you the truth it's easier for me to do that than it is to get a shiny paint job which right. that's not uh well but like you but said the real car wasn't that shiny from they the factory. weren't they weren't i mean they you couldn't really see yourself in a lot of places and, right uh you look across the top of this fender you know you see it's not exactly super glass smooth right. those cars weren't uh they just weren't and I see that you have a resin Studebaker panel <laughs> over there that you're working on. Yep. Uh, I bought that body like 30 years ago or one of my, I don't, I'm, I hadn't done the math on that, 1990. About 31 years ago? I bought it at, uh, at uh, the Southwest Challenge in Dallas, model contest. And uh, I think it was 20 bucks. I had a buddy of mine, Justin, just got back this weekend. He, uh, well, he lives outside of Dallas, but Justin from J Hart Models, and he went to the contest this weekend, and he, uh, he got first place in street custom for his Chevelle, and uh, I think his two pickups he done like a uh, old thirty something or forty something Chevrolet pickups, and I can't remember what the other one was. He got second place in those. Oh, he's stepping up there. That's that's yeah. good good awards. They, the guys that uh, running that down that way now, some of them may still be some of the same guys. Right. <clears throat> uh, the original fellows, one of them, I don't even know where he is, he don't even model anymore, uh, was a guy named Rush Swinkler. Mm -hmm. Did beautiful work. Uh, and then the other guy that was one of the, the, the big guys in that show was uh, Mike Sigmund. Yeah. Now he last I heard of him he was in Michigan somewhere. So Mike, if you're out there, you know, drop a line to us, say howdy. Hadn't seen you in thirty years. <laughs> but uh, uh I've had this that long and I'm just now getting around to building. That's the so. same. My my oldest boy was born in nineteen ninety, so that's as old <laughs> that's as old as my oldest son. <laughs> well the best I remember the best I remember is I bought that in ninety. I may have bought that in eighty nine. Yeah. I'm not sure, because... I think my first trip down there was 88, Yeah, and my last one was 93, so... 93. Uh, yeah, this, uh, you want a shot of the back of this thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like a good tail end. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, these Hate are... Hate to uh, see you leave, but like to see you walk away. Is that what it is? Is, is that the old saying? Uh, I don't remember. I remember the song, <laughs> but I don't remember... <laughs> And this in here, what your model student back This is, is a 63 Avati. And you said that was, what's the history on that? Well, that car was, uh, actually back in 63, that was the uh, fastest production car in America. Fastest production I car. I mean, it was, uh, it didn't get any press hardly, and a lot of people don't know that. And some people say, oh, BS, it wasn't either. Yes, it was. That was a screaming demon, and it was a fiberglass body car, and it was built on uh, a Lark chassis. Stupid what they used. Lark. They used everything they had to, just to make a, a hot rod. Right. 
and there wasn't very many of them made. Uh, this is is what you would call, a, I think, an R2, which yeah. it's uh, uh, would have had a Paxton supercharger, uh, 289 cubic inch Studebaker V8, oh, that's beautiful engine, and uh, four-speed transmission. Man, you even got the hoses. <laughs> Well, you did a good job. Man. Turn uh, that around to that supercharger side. Let me look at that. Oops. Slammed the hood. Glad my fingers wasn't in the way. Look at that, guys. That supercharger is freaking awesome. There was, uh, I think the this there was R1, which was, uh, uh, I used to be really up on this, but, uh, R1 was like a, a four-barrel carburetor and a four-speed or an automatic. Mm -hmm. The R2 had the Paxton supercharger and a, and a four-barrel carburetor. Look how huge that damn battery is. Uh, yeah, big, long battery. looks like something goes with John Deere tractor. Right, uh, like. Yeah, that thing's huge. Uh, there, then the R3 had a few more little options on it. I think they kind of bumped up the 289 to a 304, right. maybe. I'm not really sure about that. And then there was the uh, R5, which I, I understand there was only two R5 engines built. Mm -hmm. And they had two Paxton superchargers on two, it. Two, damn. And they went to uh, uh, Bonneville with that car, and they went over 200 miles an hour. Dang. Uh, but this uh, I, this was has been my dream car. I've wanted one of these since I was like 12. Yeah. And uh, I've come within that much of getting them a couple of times mm -hmm. but something happened and i never was able to obtain one or own one but uh, I, I would love to own one of those cars they are sweet i used to see a black one run around here around fort smith uh, around i don't think it years was a, ago i think that was a Avati too was it a body too? There was a company built these cars later on. Oh, so it was a later. Had a Chevy motor in it. Oh, well, they, well, I mean, Chevy motors are good, but they. Small block Chevy. Yeah. I mean, they would, I would have took one of those if I could have got one. Right. Uh, now, those had the square headlights. Oh, this okay. one, the first one, the 63s had round ones. Round headlights. Uh, 64s had square. Hey, and guys, then, that's. Uh, the history right there. That's something I would have never paid attention to because I was sitting there saying there's a black one that used to run around years ago and it wasn't even the same car. That's crazy. Uh, it was probably, a, I think I know that car. I think that was an Avati too. Yeah. Uh, it looked pretty much the same. Uh, let me see if I can get us under here. I don't remember. I didn't do much under there. Yeah. Still looks good and clean. Yeah, it's, I, didn't, I didn't weather anything in there. I probably got tired after I... <laughs> uh, did the interior and the uh, engine? I'll probably give out. Didn't right. do it anymore. But it's got the the carpet, you know, the uh, flocking in there. For it the looks interior. good. You know, uh, my last video I showed, uh, I went to a dollar store and bought that damn felt for a dollar. You know, and I cut it out and I laid it down and dude, that stuff, honest to God, to me looks better than flocking. Well, I. Uh, Years ago, uh, we didn't have this flocking. We used that felt, felt yeah, or corduroy, or mm -hmm. I don't know how many friends I had. The modelers would put cut corduroy out and glue it in the. I mean, it looked horrible. <laughs> we thought it was, you know, cool. ten year old kid. We thought he was making custom cars. Oh, well, you was making custom cars yeah, back then. They was ugly. God, they was ugly. <laughs> we'll get these backed up a little bit, and we'll get your the other one you wanted to look at. All right, yeah, pull yeah. that sucker around here. <laughs> This is not a Studebaker, but... Uh, no, it ain't, but man, it sure is sweet. <laughs> Look at that little homemade trailer George made. That thing, dude, you did yeah, a good yeah. job. Let me get him off there so you can eyeball that. See, he's even got the ramps. He's even got the ramps. Look at that, the little wooden ramps. But it's got the little Ford dog dish hubcaps from the old <laughs> Ford pickup. It's even got the weathering on the bed. I, I, now, that looks realistic. This looks like something some redneck here in Arkansas would be... Towing something around. Well, this, for this sure. is kit's brew, and what I tried to do is make it look like drill stem. Yeah. I don't know how many trailers I saw around here that was welded together out of used drill stem. That looks good. And, uh, you know, the, it's hollowed out on the end with rusty. It sure is, man. I, uh, yeah, the, notice the details on that. That is 
Yeah, Pretty dang it. sweet. It's just, it's just sprue is mm -hmm. all it is, some spare pieces. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, so you can just make your own trailer. That's, you know, a lot of people don't realize that, you know. Yeah, you can just make your own trailer if you got the creative <laughs> ability to do it. Now, this was my uh, poor boy redneck cheap gasser, you know, because... Uh, George gave me two of these here a while back. One of them, he's got damn near finished you know, on the, well, the, the, the frame and stuff. I think I've showed you on a video. I'm going to finish that up hopefully sometime soon. I get out of some of these buddy builds and get them finished up. Uh, I need to finish that up. But, man, I love this. I love it. Now, this one, I think I built this probably in uh, oh, about the same time as around the late 80s. Late 80s. Uh I saw something in a magazine where a guy was running one of these. Hot damn. And Look he had a Hudson engine. Six cylinder. And back then, you know, uh, uh, our Hudson model maker wasn't even around yet. We mm -hmm. didn't have a Hudson model. Right. And uh, So you scratch built that. I, I got that. That's a, one of those old 41 Plymouths. You know, they're good for something every now and then. <laughs> That's a 41 Plymouth six cylinder. And uh, I made it kind of look like a Hudson. That is and, very uh, cool. That finned head mm -hmm. is actually an AMT 32 Ford grill. Damn. It's filed down and cut down to look like a finned aluminum head. That's creativity right <laughs> there, buddy. <laughs> That's, uh, I don't remember where the, the spark plug wire came from, but if you'll notice, one of them's a different color from the rest of them. A little lighter. It blue. is a little lighter, ain't it? I would have yeah. not really paid much attention, but. You're right. It is lighter. The boots, the red boots, are uh, the insulation off like uh, <clears throat> telephone wire. Mm -hmm. You open them up and get all them different colors. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. That is so and, damn cool. Uh, uh, of course, the the carburetors are the the old AMT standbys that are in the '53 Ford pickup mm -hmm. and the the uh, Fiat Dragster. All of them. You know, they got those. Eight and six carburetors. That's strong, what those strong, are. Strong, 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 strong birds. birds. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, but that's a that's a poor boy gasser. You know, yeah, in the low class. It sure is, and I love it. See, I love the steel wheels. I like how you got the torque thrust there in the front. And, <laughs> man, it's just everything about that car is just. That's a junkyard special mm -hmm. right there. I and, love it. And this this whole thing is nothing but parts because that. Uh, uh, this Anglia was missing the engine and transmission mm -hmm. and some more pieces. And uh, I, when I saw that car in that magazine, I thought, well, I can get something to look like that. <laughs> so, I, you know, I called it Brand X. You know? That is pretty <laughs> damn cool. That's a, that's a working guy's gasser, you know, H gas. That probably ran something like, I don't know. 14 second ET or something. It wasn't going to be real fast, you know. No, but it looked cool though, didn't it? Was, you were racing, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It looked cool. Your door still open on it or are you afraid uh, to open them? Well, I don't know. It's been so long since I've done any of this. These old Revell doors never did work very well. See there? There we go. You can look in there and see if there's anything in there. I, is the steering wheel gone? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, everything's getting old, fellas. I, I hate to show <laughs> these with parts missing, but uh, Yeah, but it's 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 part of your your history. Your Well yeah, because that's that's uh we could pull stuff out of your cabinets for for long time and just right, look. We'll, we'll pull a couple of more out I guess and and see what kind of mess I've got. But uh these these old Ravel hinges were really fiddly. They yeah. never did fit well. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, that works, too. I don't think there's anything in it, though. Might be where your steering wheel's at. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't no, doubt no, it. nothing back there. Nothing back there. All Not right. a thing. Well. That takes an act of Congress to do. I'll have to do that when I do Oh, yeah. I'm not in too good a shape to do it right now. But anyway, that's, uh, that's an old build. That's from... Uh, this is clear decal paper with uh, dry transfers on them. That looks good. That's how, how I got the power by Hudson and the 156H gas. And, you know, that, that's mm -hmm. just a dry transfer. Cool. And uh, I think the paint is Tester's uh, 
Pontiac Engine Blue, I think is what that was. Oh, okay. And it's kind of changed color. That paint fades after so many years. Right. Boy, she sure does look good, though. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I oh, gonna, well, it's a, it was something to do at the time. I'm going to pause this and look up there real quick at all these little goodies you got going on. I'll start putting some of this up. Okay. I just thought I'd show y'all real quick. This is stuff he's just got laying around his bench. Y'all seen the Mustang that he finished up here a while back. And uh, now he's got a couple of the Fiat's he's working on. You can see that one's not in its finished stage. Look at that right there. Fire Dome. Hemi. Fuel rails. I mean, just, just awesome, guys. That right there's not wired yet. No magnetos on it, but man. Sure does look good. Alright, we're going to pause this out and go get some more stuff, guys. George, what we got here? Well, that's some more of this junk we were digging out of my display case that's been there for 115 years. Uh, <laughs> almost as old as you. <laughs> almost as old as me. Uh, I'm one year younger than Moses. There you go. Yeah, but uh, anyway, this this old uh, 60 wagon here, the old Johan kit, uh, when I built that, I built it to tow the Willie's gasser I gave to you. The old uh, Damn. tan colored. Well, know. I really need that thing to go with that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that I, I built that with that in mind to tow that with mm -hmm. a tow bar. Uh, Somebody did uh, did that in a Scale Auto magazine uh, back in the 80s, and I, mm -hmm. I looked at it and thought it was cool, so I built one like mm -hmm. that, you know, similar to it. But uh, uh, that's just Tester's paint. It's it's beige and champagne gold. I love that champagne with some, gold. With some chrome foil, and it's, it's curbside. It has no engine. There's really no detail on the bottom. Uh, and those kits, I know you love them, but doggone, they were crude. Woo. <laughs> yeah, that that really is a crude kit. Can I turn it? Sure. It's, uh, uh, of course, back during that time, we thought they were the greatest things that ever was. But by today's standards, they're pretty crude. Yeah, but, you know. You know. But that body is probably as correct as you'll ever get. Right. The, the chassis and everything else sucks. Yeah. But that body is probably spot on. Uh, that body would be, I'm sure. Uh, and, you know, too, that's what was cool about Johan. They did stuff that most model manufacturers weren't going to do. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, <laughs> they uh, did some if they didn't do this, there wouldn't be no 60 wagon out that's there. Right. That's, that's for They're sure. the only ones that did it, as far as I know. So All those old ugly Plymouths. Yeah. Yep. I always used to say that they were designed by Joe Tasteless because they, <laughs> they were just ugly. You know? Get a good money shot of that. There we go. That thing's, you know, my brother-in-law had uh, Bob. He just retired out there at Gerber. Uh, back in 90s, he had a 60 Plymouth uh, hardtop. And it was just about as long as that, but it was two door. Yeah. And you know, of course, it swooped down right here, but it had the exact same fins and everything. Yeah. He sold that car. We call it the Batmobile. Right. <laughs> yeah, we call it the Batmobile. Yeah, that uh, that old thing right there. I probably, I want to say, I probably built that one about eighty five. About eighty five. Uh, that would have built that probably. Not long after I learned about bare metal foil, right. so I don't think they'd been around very long by '85. Right, and uh, I, I got some of it to try it. I uh, saw it, you know, advertised, and I uh, ordered it through uh, Scale Auto mm -hmm. out of the, one of the advertisements. And that's what he's talking about, guys. It's just as crude as can be. That's the reason why he didn't want to put the engine in it. Didn't even have engine uh, uh, firewall and. Stuff like that detail, so he just left it out. Uh, it, it, it makes a good curbside. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to have the hood up to, yeah. to think, hey, that looks cool. Right. Uh, it looks okay like that. I mean, uh, it'll have to do, but 
Oh yeah. But it's a Johan, so it's a piece of history, and there all there will never be another one. That, no. That's it. You know. No, nope, there'll never be another one. Now, uh, now these other two here. Let's talk about them. Uh, this is a '62 Corvair, and this is, was either a '61 or '62 Corvette. Mm -hmm. uh, and most people will associate that as an AMT. They were actually SMP. SMP. Uh, uh, SMP didn't become part of AMT till about. If I remember right, it was somewhere around like July of 1962. Yeah. Uh, SMP had the means of making the stuff. AMT had the means of distributing it. Right. So the boxes, uh, some of you collectors will know this. The boxes, some of them look identical except for the little red square. One of them will say AMT, one of them will say SMP. SMP, yep. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this was, uh, I think, there's a variant of this kit still out there. You can still buy it. I mean, it was. Except for one thing. Uh, well, that what just fell out. That just fell out. And this, these little clips. And of course, that one snapped off. Whoa, come yep. back here. <laughs> you yep. don't see them in kits anymore. No. But the little C-clips. Yep, that's the difference. It had a trunk. Yep, the uh, hood or the trunk, these little C-clips hook on. To your trunk lid, just like and that. then your body, you know, they would have this little piece, mm -hmm. and it allows them to raise and lower. Uh, this may be operable still in the, up here, if I can open it. It does keep them, yep, it keeps them pretty tight. Not too sure I'm going to be able to do this, guys. <laughs> there we go. Doing. Now you see, look down in there, and that's that's where the little clip will go. Yep. Now this uh, one here, you just built it pretty much out of the box. No. This was uh, this was a built up. Yeah. Uh, it oh, was, it was a it built was, up you got. It, it was. I bought it as a built up. It was a glue bomb. Yeah. I mean a glue bomb, and uh, I sanded and I tried to save some of the the chrome trim and. Mm -hmm. uh, I never have been able to find the, uh, this is broken, this headlight. Mm -hmm. One of the trim on the headlight is broken. Right. Uh, I tried to get them off, and I was going to be destroying something if I did. Right. So a lot of it I just left alone. Of course, you can see there was something glued on here that mm -hmm. I'd taken off. But the chrome still wasn't in too bad a shape. I like those wheels. Uh and I put a little flocking back here and worked a little on the interior because you can see it. Right. But uh, that was a glue bomb built up that I, and all I did was try to save it because a lot of these are around, but they don't have this. Right. They don't have the opening trunk. And what's the wheels on that? Uh, those are just uh, like Halliburton knockoffs. Well, did they come in the kit? They or? came in the kit. Those are. Yeah, that's hoping to be road racing wheels, wouldn't Oh, they? yes, definitely. Those are awesome. Uh, that that little kit there was, uh, I, I wished I had pictures of it mm -hmm. when I got it, because it laid around for a little while. I didn't think I'd be able to save it. Yeah. <laughs> it uh, but I, I worked on it, and it took, uh, I don't know, I, I think the steering wheel and... Uh, these bumperettes mm -hmm. and the red tail lights are from one of the recent reissues because they were shot and maybe some engine parts, but the rest of it was original. And that's uh, GM Arctic Blue is the color. GM Arctic Blue. Beautiful color. And I don't know, I did that sometime, that would have been sometime in the 80s, late 80s. Yeah. 86, 87. And this one oh, is... Oh, and two. Lady 6, eight, the no internet, guys. So yeah, I... You, the parts weren't readily available. And that's no. why he said that at the time he didn't have the parts to fix the headlights and stuff like that. Because parts weren't readily available. No. Uh, uh, now, this car, I did a little later, I'm pretty sure. And uh, now, the wheels, I think... 
the bumper and the headlights and the back chrome is a Holt House. Holt House, okay. Uh, resin uh, copies. Uh, that's an original 62 Corvair, also an SMT. That thing's sweet. Uh, and it was a glue bomb. Oh, it was, it was, it was rough. It had been painted really thick with something, and it crazed. Crazed. And I spent, uh, you can still see some of it in, in, in the body. Mm -hmm. And I almost lost that detail for the uh, fuel cap. filler. Uh, I sanded on that thing till I was give out trying to save it. Care if I uh, touch it? Go ahead. I'm going to check out this real quick. It's, uh, Look in there, you got a magazine in there. <laughs> Mac, two magazines in there. You got the chrome foil on the door cards. Looks like you got flocking in it. Yeah. Those wheels are pretty cool wheels. Was that a stock wheel or is that a custom wheel? Uh, I don't remember. I guess that's what came in the kit. I mean, that, since I didn't get that in a kit, right. it was built. Uh, some of them I've seen built have those, so I'm, I take it they were a kit. But mm, did you? you can see this is this is the old what they call the screw bottom. Yep. It's got the four screws, and it's what some call a promo style mm -hmm. kit. Uh, uh, there's been some we've discussed and made some comments that all kits were promos until 1963. Well, I, I don't know where that guy got his information, but he's uh, uh, he's dreaming. Uh, Unless you put the white walls on the inside. That's, that's styrene plastic. That's not that promo, promo stuff. stuff. That, yeah, you know, that that's, that's styrene. And that came as a glue kit. Yeah. Uh, just like this one. Yep. And uh, I had several of these Corvairs. I had the four-door, I had the convertible, and I had a Monza. And uh, down through the years, I fooled around and sold them off. Uh, I should have kept them, but I didn't. Here a while back, I was in uh, northwest Arkansas at the Homestead Flea Market or whatever up there, antique shop, whatever it was. And they had an original promo, still had the box, and it was red and it was a four-door. And they wanted 60 or 70 bucks for it, which I didn't think that was too bad, you know, uh, still having the box What year for was it? I don't know. It's, it's this style right here, but it was, I think it was four-door. Um, that was a 60. I think yeah. the 60 was a four-door. Okay. It was a 60. And the color was what? Red. It was red. Uh, okay. Uh, if it was in really good shape with the box, I'd, I'd say I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I'd buy I'd, I'd, I'd it. Well, I didn't buy it at the time, but then when I went uh, back the next gone. time, it was gone, yeah. of course. That's why sometimes you got to, you know, I didn't know at the time. I was like, well, I don't know. That was a little steep in my pocket at the time. But You think long, you think yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah, and I thought, I thought wrong, long, so it was wrong. Went back the next time I got to go back up there with my wife's confusion. I've, I've done the same thing. I've lost some pretty good <clears throat> deals. Yeah. And some of them I lost just because I didn't know. Right. Uh, before I'd learned, but uh, I I don't know. I bought these were bought from different people at different times, and they were glue bombs, and they weren't very expensive. Right. But today, I guess they would be. Probably, yeah. Even glue bombs are getting expensive uh, these days. Uh, that's. Uh, I'm glad I got them when I got them. You mm -hmm. know, uh, this car. I pulled this out of the case a few minutes ago. On the re it's nothing special, but. Uh, uh, this was built out of the uh, the old AMT Cruising USA series. The, was that the Bears Custom one? Yeah, the... it came with some dry transfers and these ugly yeah. box art. Yeah. Ugly. And it was molded in blue. Blue, yeah, blue. Now, I bought this kit in like 1979. Mm -hmm. And I was... I wanted the hard top, but I couldn't find it. At the time, the only thing I could find was this convertible. And what I was trying to do, I wanted to build a, a custom that I had seen in a magazine that uh, Tim Boyd built mm -hmm. and won a contest, MPC contest or something in like 77 or 78. Right. It, uh, some guys may have seen that car. It's orange. Uh, Corvette suspension. It was down on the ground. It was a pretty car. <laughs> and... Uh, course i didn't have near the skills he did but i wanted to build a custom right 
So I found this one, and uh, I'd started fooling with it. And in January 1980, my daughter was born. <laughs> uh, and I took a, I took vacation from work when we brought her home. Right. And I sat at the kitchen table in this mobile home I lived in. <laughs> Uh, the, the wife at the time on the other side, me on this side, the little baby right here in the, in the you know, we've taken care mm -hmm. of her. And I built this damn car on the table. <laughs> and uh, uh, I did go back later and put some chrome foil on that uh, skirt. Uh, skirt and right there. Now, at that time, I don't think there was any chrome foil. Right. I don't remember when chrome foil came about. But this was built in like 1979 slash 80. It's a survivor still here. Uh, the chrome windshield is, of course, silver paint. That's mm -hmm. all I had. Uh, I don't remember what that grill came out of, but I cut out the, the stock grill. Mm -hmm. And Tim Boyd had pancaked the hood. Yep. He had uh, uh, puttied it in and then cut it out up here, which he did a hell of a lot better job than I did. And this one isn't hinged. His was. Oh, this still looks good, though. But that old engine, I, I wanted to detail that. The plug wires are thread. That's the way we did it back in the day. Uh, yep, there wasn't was. any plug wires. We didn't know anything about that yet. Right. Uh, that's, that's just thread, and it was pulled through. Uh, I cut a notch in a candle <laughs> and pulled it through to take the fuzziness off of it, and that, that's how I got my my plug wires. That's cool. And uh, the uh, seats, you see the piping on the seat it there. There sure is. There is piping uh, that's, on That's it. just some, some thick thread <laughs> that uh, the little woman had at the time. And that's brush painted inside, and this was shot with a spray bomb. That is cool. And um, It was, uh, I don't remember the color of the paint, but it was over a gold base. Yeah, I can tell. That looks like it's over gold. It was gold, and then it was shot with so this. So it was that transparent red, probably one of uh, the testers, maybe? It was It was all testers, but yeah. I don't remember the color. But uh, Ru Or do they call it ruby red? may have been ruby red. Ruby red. But there's, you know, nothing special under there. <laughs> That's all in the style of the late 70s. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, that's when I was still trying to get my skills together because I wasn't very good at this. Right. Well, it looks pretty dang good uh, to me. <laughs> but that's Even a, to this day. That's a survivor. That's that's just been floating around with me uh, since 1979. That's, that's awesome. Uh, and, of course, the, the paint on the white walls is uh, uh, it's some acrylic craft paint and it didn't really cover very well. Right. But, 1979, uh, I was glue bombing the hell out of it. Well, that, brush you know, most of them I built were glue bombs. That was the neatest kit I had done up to that point, I guess. Right. Uh, and, uh, of course, the inspiration for this whole whole build right here was uh, was because of the Tim Boyd car that right. I saw him do. So I wanted to build one that way. But, you know, my, my skills, I didn't have the skills he had. So I got a bunch of hot rodder magazines that uh arco from arco's customs had uh sent me and uh it's got in the back of the magazine and they're from the 70s and 80s and in the back of the magazine it has the modeler's corner yeah and it's tim boyd right i'm gonna have to get those out and show them on my channel sometime. <laughs> i've got a few of them here that uh uh i think i he did he chopped a 49 mercury mm-hmm and uh, I don't remember when, what time that was. That was the late 70s, I think. 78, something along in yeah. there. I tried to do what he did, and I think I butchered three 49 Mercury kits. <laughs> and I never could get it right. And uh, if it wasn't something Tim Boyd was building, it was something earlier. It was a guy named Don Emmons. Yeah. Emmons, yeah. In, yeah. Uh, Don Emmons built a lot of stuff that was just... I tried to look, I tried to make my stuff look like his, or tried to make my stuff look as good as Tim's, mm -hmm. and uh, of 
course, at that time, I'd see pictures in magazines, and I would see coverage of their contests. I'd not been to one yet. Right. And so I really didn't know what they looked like. I, photographs always make them look better. Right. But sometimes when you see one that's beautiful and you see it in person, it's even better in person than the photograph. But <laughs> uh, I found those. But uh, that that's that's the guys that I would look up to and try to try to get my skills to look like theirs. I never did it, but I tried. Right. But uh, you know, I Tim and Tim Boyd and and uh, Emmons, you know, those guys, they were winning best of show and. And different things. Oh, they're legends in the yeah, modeling community. Tim, he won some some hellacious awards. Now I've never won a best of show yeah. anywhere. And we lost uh, Tim Boyd here just a what did year, we? year or two back, wasn't it? Didn't he die? I don't know. I just saw something posted by him not long was ago. Was it not too long ago? I could have sworn he died, but No, no, he's he's still kicking as far as is I he? know. I hope he is, but <laughs> me too. I could have uh, sworn I seen something where he died, you know, he, but I those guys were winning all those big things. Now all I ever was able to do was maybe when the class I was entered in. Yeah. You know, in uh, competition oval, I might win a first place, or uh, factory stock, I might win a first place, you know, in, in a category. Mm -hmm. I never did win no best of show. I right. mean, I got blown away in that. I couldn't do it. <laughs> but uh, I had fun. Right. And I met a hell of a lot of people that are uh, uh, pretty well-known modelers, and they taught me some stuff. Unfortunately, like you're talking about, most of them's gone now. Oh, yeah. Or about to be gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. All right, George. Pause, pause that up. Maybe we'll get one or two more real quick. and then. All right, George. Let's talk about a couple more here. All right. We'll get this over with pretty quick here. This is nothing big. That's about the hundredth time you've done that. Yeah, I knocked that off. Always. Uh, this little car um, is a... 29 Roadster on 32 Ford rails. Okay. And the reason I, I built this little car is somewhere around 1989 or 1990, uh, there was a, a modeler named Steve Catron built one that was beige that I just thought was killer. Had a Arden overhead valve conversion in it and a bunch of scratch built stuff. I was really impressed with his build and saw it at a contest. So uh, I tried to get something together similar to it mm -hmm. and that's just uh it's just an old uh amt turn that around 32 ford chassis you know there we go uh with the uh, 29 body and uh some scratch built pieces here and there to look like a you know a early hot rod a dragster and of course the old decals are the from the 1960 AMT 32 Ford kit. Okay. And that's one of the original pie crust slicks from one of those kits from 1960. They look good. They look good. Uh, the engine, I don't remember what I got it out of. It I really good. don't. But uh, the exhaust headers are uh, solder solder with heat staining on them yep and uh, of course you know there's the uh, stock stuff on the bottom the stock chassis um, it's got a piece of wire laid in it right here oh, sure of course is. you can't see it which makes the the frame rail swoop out which that was actually part of a fender on the 32 mm -hmm. Ford it's not a, a straight rail so I, I tried to make that look right and then there's the old X-side six volt battery in the trunk. That's cool. With a with a fuel tank that you pumped up. There's that. And uh, then I tried to make the uh, interior you know, look like a door panel and stripped out interior and a roll bar and. Uh, That's amazing. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, and painted it in primer because you know I. Oh yeah. Most of them would have been painted anyway, but. But that was uh, that was fun to do. Yeah. I enjoyed it. And, you know, got the push bar built where you can push start him and mm -hmm. uh, get his old flathead fired up on maybe some fuel and go out there and run a 
smoking 13 second lap time you know <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's the way it was then but uh, yeah anyway that's uh i know there's some pieces gone because i i built that you know, about 1990 it's 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 made two or three moves and parts have fell off of it and i like that decal in the yeah area. that was that was one of those uh out of that original 32 ford kit okay it was on the it was on the decal sheet that thing's awesome and, and two the center steer you know the well it's all set yeah center, all yeah. set almost yeah that's awesome that engine that <laughs> i love the way you do your engines it's just badass oh well if i could do everything else to match it i might have me a pretty good looking car but oh well and this old thing over here, that's an eBay find. That was an old... Uh, Pull that sucker up close. Somebody built this back in the 60s from the 27T kit. They did a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. But we were talking about corduroy because we didn't corduroy. have flocking. Yeah, There's some corduroy material on this one. That's and uh, This thing, some kid built that back then probably. Somebody built it. And, of course, there, once again, we have thread for uh, this plug wires and... That looks like fishing line <laughs> for your fuel. The doors and, are even open. You uh, notice that? He's, he's hinged it. He's hinged it with, uh, I don't know what that is in there. Probably a piece of leather or a piece of fabric. That's so cool. And, uh, of course, it's falling apart, too. And uh, Oh, look at the taillights. I just noticed that. Look, yeah. Look at the taillights Frenched in. Look at this. That, Yeah. I would put that thing back together as a survivor and just... Well, that's that's what I, I intended to do with it. It's why I bought it. Uh, that is so uh, damn cool. He's used parts from all kinds of kits. Dang sure did. Look at that exhaust. Now, this rear end, I'm pretty sure, it came from the uh, uh, one of those... Uh, I keep looking at that, and I say, I know where that came from. It looks like a chrome... That may have been the, the, the George Montgomery 33 Willys gasser. Yeah. That may be where that came from. And, of course, these were in a number of kits. Right. And uh, that's the old early and mid-60s A&T Slicks. Firestone. And he's, I don't know where he got this front axle, but he's, he's hinged it where it'll steer. I don't think it came that, that way. That almost looks like it the 40 have. model Ford axle. It may be. AMT? Uh, it may be. And what what he's done is he's uh, he's carved out the recess. Sure has, hasn't he? And, uh, yeah. and uh, There was a lot of work done on that. There, there was a lot of work done. I wonder done. if that was like a, a model contest car he built for the day. Well, cause... I bought two cars from this guy on eBay. Mm-hmm. And he had this car, which was missing parts, and there was a, a another 27T, which is back in 1965 was marketed as My Mother the Car from mm -hmm. the TV series. Now he had one of those that was uh, started, but not complete. Right. And uh, I ended up getting both of them for ten dollars, plus the you know five six dollars shipping. Right. Under. But I asked this man uh, about this one. He was somewhere in the uh, Midwest, up north. Mm -hmm. He said this was a, a contest winner from 1960. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think that's correct because this kit wasn't available in 1960. Right. So he's got that wrong. And then he told me, he says, it may be 62. Well, I don't think this kit came out till 64. So this has got to be 64, 65, or 66. Yeah. Somebody built this, and he says it was a contest winner. It had a little uh, little piece of metal with uh, first place, 19-something or other. Mm -hmm. uh, but it looked like somebody made it. Right. But uh, more than likely, this did see a contest somewhere. I don't know who the builder is. I don't know where it originated from. Uh I'll tell you what, restore that sucker back. Well, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that with us showing this, if there's anybody old enough, maybe they recognize this. Yeah. And I can get some history on it. Because uh, uh, 
when this was original, this was a pretty good looking car. Right. <laughs> I mean, the paint was nice, the bodywork was nice, and uh, they spent some time on this because he took some time to cut this body open. Yes, he did. Rob, if you're listening, get through your magazine, start looking, buddy, and see if you can track down if this was in a magazine or not. That thing is awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I'd like to know who that builder is. I mean, they may be they may be in a rest home today eating pudding, but, uh, <laughs> and they may be gone. Right. But, uh, uh, I, I want to restore this. I really do. Yes, yes, that is, that, that really needs a rest. I mean, my God, they... For back in the day, they did the uh, opening doors. Yeah. They French tail lights in there. They did the uh, suspension. They did the. Uh, they did the detail on the engine. Look, look at the double headlights for the day. Look, look yeah. at that. Double. I don't remember what those came in, but I built a kit that had those in it. And I don't remember what. Yeah, it that's. Is. But he he's put them up here. That is, I mean, you know, and he he's wired and and <laughs> and plumbed and turned the wheels. Uh, I mean, dude, I mean, for the day, look at that. Single seat in the front. <laughs> you got the fire extinguisher. I mean, that is a restoration for sure. Finish that up, George. Yep. Uh, this this needs to be saved. It's a, it's a 60s save. It's yeah. got to be. Uh, and that's why I've, I've not done anything with it so far. I haven't... I've, I've kept it and tried to keep the parts with it because uh, that's that's a piece of history again. You yes, know? it is. All right, George, thanks for showing these to me. This is all the time we got for this session. <laughs> so all you guys that uh, love to follow, just stick around for the next one. All you uh, subscribers that uh, ain't subscribed, hit the hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the bell. Uh, subscribing's free. Thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever makes your world go around. Thank you, guys. Peace out.